Okay, so this is part two of um, the ellipse. And in this part, we are looking for, um, we're given the equation and then asked to find, along with graphing, uh, center endpoints, major and minor axes, um, the foci and the hi, Eleanor. Okay, so for this one, we're asked to find the uh, center, the endpoints of the major and minor axes, uh, the foci and the foci of the ellipse, and then graph. So if on the homework, um, these often do not come with a graph, I always graph them. For me, that's the easiest way to, to find all this stuff is just to look at the picture and go, okay, it's right there. Um, you can also do this by just using the definitions. And if you know your center and it's asking for the endpoints of the major and minor ellipse, the endpoints are going to be A off the center, the minor will be B off the center. Um, I'm not the best with my left and right, so for me I have to draw it. Um, some people are able to do that comfortably in their head, I am not, so for me I'll do a graph. Um, our center is pretty easy to spot, it's right there, it's our HK. So that is negative 4, negative 1. And then um, A is going to be 5, and B is going to be 2. So let's get this thing graphed. Uh, let's see, center is so negative 4, negative 1 right there. A is 5, so that puts us here, and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. And then B is 2, so up 2 and down 2. So then our major axis, the endpoints of the major and minor axis, is this another way of saying the vertex or the vertice? So um, for the major, those look to be at negative 9, negative 1. And oh, actually, let's see. That was at 4. Yeah, that's right. And then at um, 1, negative 1. And then the minor, so that one is at negative 4, uh, 1, and that one is at negative 4, negative 3. So I'm just getting those by reading them off of the graph. You could also say from the center here, this is going to be plus or minus 5, so plus 5 um, would have gotten you the 1. Minus 5 would have gotten you the negative 9. From the center, this would be up 2, so there's the 1. Down 2, there's the negative 3. Uh, again, if I try to do all that in my head, I get stuff backwards. So I do better if I draw the picture. So there would be our lips. And then the other thing it asked, and this is the trickier one, that's the foci. And so to do that, we're going to need to find C. So our relationship again was A squared minus B squared equals C squared. So this is 5 squared minus 2 squared equals C squared. 5 squared minus 2 squared would be 21, because 25 minus 4 is C squared. And if I take the root of both sides, that gets me C. And if I cared to graph this, um, I could throw that in a calculator and figure out that C is about 4.6. So it would just be kind of just inside the vertice. Um, and the only reason I would do that is so that I can kind of help myself when I come down here to write this um, for figuring out where those points are. So this part's a little bit tricky. If you look back, um, actually just looking here at the center, our x coordinates are going to be negative 4. And then we're going to go this root 21. We're going to go plus root 21 this way, and that's going to get us to that x coordinate. And on the second one, we're going to go minus root 21. And that's again starting at that negative 4 um, to get to here. So from negative 4, I'm going to go plus or minus root 21. And then the y coordinate of both of those points is negative 1. Oops, I need a root over that. 
So from negative four, we're either going plus root 21 or minus root 21. And you see like, if this came out to a nice number, pretend it was, you know, root um, nine, then from four, we would, go, we would be going plus three to negative one or minus three uh, to negative seven. It's just, this is kind of a crappy number, so it makes it harder to see. But that's all we're doing is coming from the center each direction. And then if you notice back here, there's all these negative ones. Um, those should all kind of match up. So I always sort of double check myself that that's happening um, along the major axis so that I didn't accidentally reverse something. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do it on a clean piece of paper so I have room and I'll come back to the one with the graph. Um, so I've just copied this over and then we're asked again to find the center, the endpoints of the major and minor axis, which again is just the, the vertice. Uh, the foci of the ellipse and then uh, graph it. And on the homework, it may not ask for the graph. Again, for me, it's very helpful that, uh, for I, I draw the graph. Um, so let me come over here. And one thing that they like to do in these problems I have to choose from, I don't know why they did this, but they like throw in some extra factor. So notice everything here is divisible by five. So first thing to do is just get rid of the silly five that they threw in the problem. Um, so when we do that, we're going to get 5 into 20 would give us a 4x squared. 5 there will give us, um, and actually I think as I do this, I'm going to change the order and hopefully this doesn't throw you off, but just so I don't have to rewrite it, I'm going to group my, I'm going to bring my x's together and my y's together and I'm going to bring my 20 over so I don't have to rewrite it again. Um, so here I'm going to write this as minus 8x and then I'll flip over to the y, so plus y squared, and five goes into that one, that'd be four y. And then, um, I'll just write it right here, plus four equals zero. So I just flip flop those two terms is all that happened. And now I'm gonna factor that four out because I need this to be a plain x squared. Because remember when we do the factoring, it's gotta come out to an x plus or minus something, so I can't have a coefficient on either of those. So, um, we'll take a four out front, and that's gonna be x squared minus two x. Um, here, I'm just gonna, even though I could use that four, again, I can't necessarily use the four, so I'm just gonna kick it off to the side um, and show it just rolled in with a constant. Um, so right here we would do uh, half of two is one, one squared makes one, so we're going to add a one. And then here we'd have y squared plus four y, half of four is two, two squared makes four. So there's that four I could have used. And then that's going to equal negative four. This one right here, this is really a four because we're going four times one. And then this other four I added, so that's that one. This is this one. And then let's factor. So we got 4x minus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared minus 4 plus 4 cancels equals 4. And then I need this to equal 1, so that tells me I need to divide everything by 4. And then once I do that, we got x minus one squared plus y plus two over four equals one. And so now let me come back here to the one with the graph. So now I know my center and that's gonna be at one uh, negative two um, I know, let's see, I know A is 2, and I know B is 1. So that gives me a bit of information. I can get my graph drawn. Um, and this could be a tiny little graph bummer. And, yeah, I shouldn't rescale that. Okay, so X is 1, Y is negative 2. And then A is 2, um, big number ended up under Y, so this is going to be the kind of tall, skinny one. And then we got one and one on either side. So now it's asking for the uh, major and minor vertices. 
so major is going to be here and here because that's the long the long distance versions so that's going to be one zero and then one negative four and then minor so that's going to be the short direction so this one is at x is zero y is negative two and this one is at x is two y is negative two and then we just got to get the foci Okay, so then coming back here, I'll do uh, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So 2 squared minus 1 squared equals c squared. So 4 minus 1, that would be 3 equals c squared. And c equals root 3. Um, so now our foci are going to run up and down. So root 3 is about 1.7. So I put it about there and there. And again, I'm not trying to be terribly accurate. I'm just doing that as sort of a visual cue to help me get everything in the right spot. So we'll come here and go to the C are going to be um, X coordinate for both of those is one. And that's all these ones that we see this time running this way. And so they're coming off of the center. So that's gonna be negative two. We're going up root three, and we're going from there also down root three. Okay, for this next one, uh, this time we're given some of the features and we're asked to find the equation. Uh, I'm doing this with the graph. There may not be graphs on the homework. Uh, it's optional, but for me, it helps me keep, again, everything orientated. So find the equation of ellipse with a focus at x is four, y is two, um, a vertex at 5, 2, so that's right there, and a center at 2, 2. So there's our, our HK. And so looking at this, um, I'm going to have, so this is center to focus, so that means C is 2. This one is center to vertex, so that means uh, A is 3. The other thing it does is it gives me, uh, by symmetry, I know the other side. And given two of these, I can find the third measurement, which would be B, and that gives me my minor axis. So um, we'll go three squared minus B squared equals two squared, and flip-flop those, and nine minus four equals, adding that over, B squared, and then root both sides, uh, root five equals B. And that's about 2.2, just to finish off the graph. And again, I don't think you have to do that on the homework. Oops. So something like that. Um, and then to get my equation, this one is running parallel to x. So the a is going to be under the x term. And center was 2, 2. So x minus 2 squared over 3 squared or 9 and then y minus two as well squared. And then b, so uh, b was square root five, so squaring both sides, b squared is plain five. And then that would equal one. Okay, so these last couple are applications. Uh, this first one goes, a bridge is to be built in the shape of a semi-elliptical arch and is to have a span of 260 meters, the height of the arch at a distance 112 meters from the center is to be 99 meters find the height of the arch at the center. So the first thing to do, and I made an attempt at a drawing here, is to define your coordinate axes. So this is my x-axis, and this right here is my y-axis, and then my origin is right there. And then this distance, so that's the distance that, that it's spanning, so that's 160 meters. Um, the reason I defined this the way that I did, that puts the origin as my HK, that's at my center. So it simplifies my equation down to X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared equals one. So then I don't have to mess around with an HK. Um, we know A because they told us the span is 260 uh, meters. So A, which would be half of that, would be 130. So let me start that right there. And then the other thing we know is they told us 112 meters from the center, it's supposed to be 99 meters high. So they're giving us that point right there. And this is, so when X is 112, 
y is 99. So what that means is they gave us an xy, we know a, and now we can solve for b. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can plug all the numbers in right now and then just sort of grind out that math. Um, it gets a little messy. Um, I decided I preferred to solve for B first. You don't have to do it this way, uh, but I thought it worked pretty well. Um, actually, before I do that, let me subtract. I'm gonna bring this over first. So I'm gonna have um, Y squared over B squared equals one minus X squared over A squared. And then um, I want B squared by itself. So I multiplied both sides by B squared. And so that cancels here. And now I have Y squared equals one minus X squared over A squared times B squared. And again, I want this B. So then I divided both sides by this. And I'm not gonna bother to simplify anything in here or try to clean it up at all from there. Um, this just gives me a, a, a place where I can plug all these numbers and then get it plugged into my calculator. So um, let me rewrite this over here. So B squared equals Y squared, and so Y up here was 99. And that's over one minus X squared, so that's 112 squared over A squared, and A was 130. And then it's just plug that into a calculator, and if all that makes it in, then I got B squared equaled 38, uh, 1,025, and then I rooted both sides, and B comes up to 195. Uh, and so you don't have to solve the formula for B. You can also just plug all these in as they are, and then one minus this on the calculator, enter, and then you'll have this Y over B squared equals a number, and then if you multiply those up, you can do this divided by that number. So there's there it is solved. You're welcome to just use that on the homework uh, to get yourself set up, or you can plug them in straight away. Okay, this last one goes, uh, the ends of a horizontal tank 16 meters long are ellipses, which can be described by the equation that, where X and Y are measured in meters, the area of an ellipse is approximated by that formula. Find the volume of the tank. Okay, so we have this tank, and our tank is 16 meters long, and then on the end, um, it is given by this formula. And then the area is gonna be the area of this end, um, is what they're describing, and we're asked to find the volume. And if you're trying to find the area of any kind of a solid, if you can go base times height, you have it. So if you think about a cube, it's length times width times height, and all that's doing is basically giving you a base and then multiplying it by the height of the same, this thing. The same thing with a cylinder. Um, the volume of a cylinder is just the area of a circle times the height. So we're doing the area of this ellipse times that length, and that will give us volume. So first thing we gotta do is figure out the area of this, which means I need to know A and B, which means I need to get that into a better form. So X squared plus 18Y squared equals 108. And then here we have 108 is supposed to be a one. So I'm gonna divide everything through by 108. And if you go, six goes into 108, it will go 18. And if you go 18 in this, it will go six. And now that equals one. Um, so then that means that A equals root 18 and B equals root six. Um, I am not gonna bother to simplify those because we're just gonna get a, a decimal approximation. Um, and so on this drawing here, 
that means a that is our root 16 and this distance right here is root 6 and then we know area equals uh, pi a b and then we know volume equals length times area so putting this here we have volume equals the length times pi times a times b and volume equals length was 16 pi is pi um, a is root 16 and then b is root 6 and then from there I just tossed all that into a calculator and I got the volume to be 522.374 meters cubed um, and then the other thing is the answer box on this one it'll look like this the volume of the tank is this much and then um, the second box is for units so anytime we're working in um, volume it's it's units cubed because they're you know it's length times width times height so meters times meters times meters so meters cubed would be your units